Okay, so we are going to replace the brake pads, the caliper and the bracket, and the rotor. You can see the rotor is worn down the grooves here. I can't stick my finger inside the groove that says that it's worn down and needs to be replaced. Brake pads, looking at them, they're not too bad, but the other sides are worn down, so when you replace one, you replace the other. The caliper, looking a little worn down too, so we're going to go ahead and replace that. For the caliper, you need a 12 millimeter, and for the bracket that the caliper is in, you're going to need an 18 millimeter. I would recommend using the breaker bar for the bracket because it tends to get stuck in there quite well, and you don't want to break your ratchet trying to get that off. Okay, the bolts, they are uh, the 12 millimeter bolts. One here, and one there. So you want to loosen the first one just a bit and then come down and break the second one. You don't want to take off this first one because you're going to have the whole caliper moving while you're trying to unloosen the second one. Okay. <clears throat> there. First one. This one can be a little difficult because you got your emergency brake line in the way. Alright, typically for taking off your calipers here, you can use a big flathead screwdriver or you can use a pry bar. You just want to put it in there, make sure you're not going into the holes of the rotor. Just slide it in there and it should pop right off this. The reason it came off so easy is because I've already taken it off once to inspect it. So usually it's not that easy to pop them off. You want to pry here and then come underneath and pry underneath to pop off. Now, Make sure that you have a hold of your caliper while you're doing that because you don't want this to fall and tug on the brake line. If you damage the brake line, you got a lot more work to do. So you want to keep this intact because it runs, it's a hydraulic, it's a closed system. You don't want unnecessary leaks. So you want to take your caliper for now and hang it right up here on top so that way it doesn't fall. Some people like to get a hanger or some kind of piece of metal to hang it from the bolt up here. Some people like to take a hanger or string or some kind of metal, run it through here and hang it on the bolts, so that way it doesn't fall. So you can see where I have it right there, it's not going to fall off unless I do some major shaking on it. So you want to keep that steady in place. And now for taking off your rear and front brake pad here on the, the back wheel, I like to take my flathead screwdriver, just ever so slightly stick it in there to get it loose. You want to push outward against the brake pad, not inward against the rotor. You don't want to damage the rotor. However, if you're replacing the rotor like I am, it doesn't matter. But, so you can see it just pops right out, right from the bracket clamps. Same thing, just pull on it a little bit, pry it ever so gently, and it pops right out. And as you can see here, these brake pads aren't very well worn. However, since the other side is completely worn down, we'll be replacing these as well. Next, we're going to take off the bracket, or the, the brace here. Okay, for the bracket, the two bolts are back here, these two bigger ones, the top one and the bottom one. Like I said, you need 18 millimeter, and I recommend using a breaker bar, because these can get rusted or stuck in place. And like what we did with the caliper, we're going to loosen the first one and loosen the second one. We don't want to take one off without the other because, again, when you go to try to take the other one off, the whole thing's going to shift with it. So, okay, so let's stop, start with our top bolt. And here we go. Okay, now 
I got it loose right there. Let's go ahead and break the bottom one now. Let's see if this is going to be as easy as the top one was. <coughs> there we go. And I like to take the bottom one off first. Then you take the top one off, it'll fall over. So take the bottom one off first, and then I work off the top one. That way I can hold the bracket while loosening it. Or I say brace, I keep calling it a bracket. I suppose you can call it one or the other. Okay. And it just comes right off. Alright, next we're taking off our rotor here. Now, typically if you're going to save the rotor, you're not replacing it, what you want to do is you just want to take your hammer and gently tap on the top, bottom, and sides. What that's going to do is it's going to break this dirty, rusty grip that's right here. Otherwise you're going to have a real hard time getting it off. So you just want to hit it gently a few times, just to break it loose. And you can see it's already starting to move. Now, since I'm not worried about damaging the rotor because I'm replacing it, I can pound it hard from behind to get it off. However, if you're reusing your rotor, you want to tap it gently on the back just like I just did. I'm going to just start hitting on the back. Here are the new brake pads. Complete with the new metal brackets. This is the new caliper and bracket set. This is for the passenger side. Uh, your passenger and driver sides have two different parts so you don't want to mix the two of them up. This one is the passenger side. Now, this I'm going to be showing you when we bleed the brake system to get the air out. It will be through this uh, release valve right here. And then here where it attaches, you can see on this bolt, that it's hollow. The hole on the side right there that's for the brake fluid to travel through this is where it hooks into the brake line so the fluid is going to travel through the bolt supplying the fluid to your caliper before we hook this up to the brake line we have to make sure that we fill up the uh, caliper with brake fluid so that way we don't have excess air in there so when we get to it, I'll remind you again the fact that when we swap out the caliper for the other caliper, we have to do it quickly so we're not losing a lot of fluid. That fluid there, that is what operates your hydraulics here. That pushes your brake pads onto the rotor. And here, this one is the driver side caliper and bracket. There's your hydraulic valves in there. Around here on the front, there is your bleeder valve, and again, your bolt here to attach to the brake line for the brake fluid to flow through. And here we have our new rotors. You'll notice on the rotor here, it's got uh, some kind of oily film on the outside part of it. So, what you're going to want to do, use yourself. Uh, 
brake part cleaner. Spray it on there and wipe it off on both sides because you do not want to have the oily film here on the face of your rotors. You don't want any kind of slippery anything in your brakes. You leave it on there, you run the risk of the brake slipping when you press the brake to activate it, so they'll need to be cleaned off. Likewise, with your brake pads here, you do not want anything greasy or oily touching the pad side of it. You want to keep that free and clear of anything like that. And same thing, we'll flip them over, give them a spray and wipe. Alright, now we're good to go. Okay, now I'm going to put our new rotor on. I'll line it up with the bolts. And just slide it right on. Just like that. Go. Cool. Alright, next, we're putting on the caliper. First thing we need to do is put on our brace. And it's going to go underneath here and here bolts will go through there. Before I attach that on there though, it's recommended and not a bad idea to put on some Loctite on there. You want the Loctite Red 271. It's made for heavy duty bolts such as automotive bolts. So you don't need to put a whole lot on, just a little dab. I'll show you. Just a little tiny bit right there like that. That's all you need. Hold up. Okay, so put the first one in just to hold it in place. Man, it's easier to find the bottom one first. There we go. Loctite on the top bolt. Do you see? That's all you need. Don't put any more than that because when you go back to work on it, it's going to be really difficult to get off. Alright. Just slide that right in there. Tighten it 
tighten it down by hand as much as you can. And then, again with your breaker bar, it is 18 millimeter. Now when you tighten these, be careful not to tighten them like Superman or Hercules because I have broken these bolts before. You don't want to deal with a broken bolt. all it takes. Alright now we're going to put the caliper on. Before we do that though we need to put brake fluid into the caliper so we don't have excessive air in our line when we go and flush the air out. First thing you want to do 10 millimeter wrench. You want to use the closed part because with the crescent end right there you run the risk of it slipping off. You want to stick it on there and loosen your bleed bolt. You want to take the bleed bolt out for right now. So that way we get airflow here because now we're going to take this small little silicone funnel that I have, put it into the hole there, and then add dot three brake fluid for Ford Excursion 2001. Add a little bit at a time because it's not going to take much to fill it up. You don't want to overflow it. And you can see it coming up right there, and you can see it coming up over here. Which means we got the right amount that we need. Just perfect. So, just put this on the towel here to keep that from leaking out. You don't want brake fluid going everywhere because it's poisonous. And we'll put our bleed bolt back in. And we are going to tighten it just slightly, so that way we don't get any leak while it's hanging out there. You don't want to tighten them down too hard though. Alright, now, this is going to go on in place of the other caliper, but first we've got to get the other caliper off. Okay, so now to take off this caliper here, this is your brake line right here. For this you're going to need a size 15 millimeter. However, you can see how rusted on that's going to be. You try and break it loose just sitting up here that's going to rattle around over the place. So what you're going to want to do is take your caliper and put it back on so that way you have some something to hold it in place to work with to be able to un, to loosen that. Okay, so you can see that I put the bolts in the top and the bottom down here. That's to hold this in place. So I can use my 15 millimeter socket to break loose the bolt for the brake line. Okay, see once I got it loose right there, I'm starting to leak fluid already. Okay, that's all I need right there is just to get it loose. So now what I'm going to do. I want to take the rest of it off by hand and then quickly transfer the brake line to the new one so that way I lose as the least amount of brake fluid as possible. You can see I'm starting to get leak already so I got this positioned up here so I can get this off as quickly as possible and then bring it down and attach it to the new caliper. Your bolt comes with two washers. You need one washer down here, right there. 
this will go through it and that washer right there Must be pretty low on brake fluid if I'm not, this should be running. That means I'm pretty low on brake fluid. The moment you take this off, this should be pouring out. So that's a good indicator of how low of brake fluid I'm at. Okay, so now we can stick that through there. Oh, well, I have it on here. Can you zoom in right there? See that little hole in there? You see it? You see it? Focus. Won't focus. So there's a little hole just inside of the brake fluid connector. The brake fluid flows right through that hole, okay. right into okay. that hole there, and runs right through. Okay. So we'll stick that through. Let's get our new caliper up here. fluid from the caliper turning it on its side. Okay. Didn't want to do that but on there. Check and make sure we don't have any more drip or leakage going on. So we'll wipe it off. Take a look. Do we have anything running out? Doesn't look like it, so I think we're good. Yep. Okay. Now, next up, Brake pads. All right, before you put in the pads now, you need to put in your metal brackets here. These will hold the pins of the brake pads into place. They just slide right in just like that. Down here on the bottom, if you get a little resistance, just push on the bottom of your rotor, and it'll give you the space for it to go in, just like that. All right, now, brake pads. When they go in, See how you got this curve right here? You want that curve to be along the curve right there. When you put it in, you just put it in kind of at an angle, just like that, on the top and bottom. Right in, there you go. Same thing in the back. Get your curve. This one, and make sure that you can see back here to do it. Again, at a curve. This one's a little more difficult to put in because it's hard to see back here. Okay, in there. Like I said, the back back here is a little more difficult. You're actually going to have to get your head back here and look and see. Obviously, I had a little difficulty doing that because my head would block the camera view of getting it back in there. Like I said, just put it in an angle, starting at the bottom, in the top, and then pop it into place. Now you got your brake pads in. Next up, caliper. It's going to go right on here now. Because this is a brand new caliper, you don't have to worry about pushing your O-ring pistons back in. I do have a tool for that. I'll show you that in just a moment. So this is just going to slide right back on. Then, you want to make sure that that flat part of this opening lines up with that right there. Put the first bolt in just to hold it in place. Okay. Then on the bottom, yeah, same thing again. Look down under here to make sure you got the flat part onto there. 
Put your bolt in. Okay, tighten that in by hand. This one, tighten in by hand too. All right, now, previously, when we took these bolts off, the original caliper on the Pathfinder took a 12 millimeter socket. However, with the, the new caliper set that I have on here, it actually, I found that it takes a 15. Now, same thing when you tighten these with the bracket. What you don't want to do is, you don't want to over tighten. So the last thing you want to do is break a bolt. I've done that before. It's not fun to get it out. There. like that. Alright, now we got those tightened on there, just double check this. Make sure it's tight enough because you don't want a leak coming from there. And then next is going to be bleeding out the brake lines. You don't need any kind of special tool or anything fancy. I'm going to show you how to bleed your brake lines using simple plastic hose that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's along with a Powerade bottle. And that's as simple as it gets. To that, I said I would show you the little tool I got. I got this from AutoZone. This is for pushing in your O-ring pistons here. All you do is take the old brake pad or a piece of metal, stick it in there across there. You can take this the round part, put it down just like that. And then, all you do is just crank the handle. And it pushes that ring right back in, just like that. Okay, something that I started doing off camera that I realized I should have done on camera for you to see. So when you got your rotor on, it's still a little loose because we have a brand new caliper on there. The hydraulic valves are not pushed out yet. You can see it's not loose anymore because I started pumping the brake pedal after I put it on there. So I stopped way through because I realized that needs to be on camera because that's the next step you do before you start bleeding your brake lines. Okay under the hood here is your master cylinder. While you're doing this process you have your cap unfastened. Some people say to take the cap off while you're doing it. Um, I only do that when I replace the caliper or I'm sorry when I replace the brake pads and then I got to push the calipers back in you have the cap off so that way while the uh, calipers or pistons are being pushed back in the air comes back up. So you just come over here and with your hand or foot just pump your brake pedal. See it's still going all the way back because it's still got more to push out. So you'll pump your brakes until you get good resistance on it. It could be anywhere from 10 to 20 times. Now before I started recording, I could push that brake pedal back easily all the way to the back without any effort or resistance. Now I'm having to push a little harder to get it down. So that's where I'd stop on it now because we need to bleed the brake lines. If we were not bleeding those brake lines, you could pump this 10, 20, 25 times and then your brake pedal would go back to the resistance where you don't need to push down so far to stop. But because we have air in the lines, you can see the pedal still goes all the way back. So next up, now that we've done that, is to bleed our brake lines.